Hey, how's everyone today? Wait a minute, it's Friday. Hello, how's everyone today? Good, much better. Thank you, thank you. My name is Kyla Williams, and I am the interim director, executive director, I keep forgetting what I am, of the uh, Smart Chicago Collaborative. We are the organization that's responsible for the Youth Led Tech program, and we welcome you to our second annual Youth Led Tech graduation. We are so excited to be here. This is, uh, for most of my staff, this is our third graduation of the day. So uh, if we get a little delirious, so you know we fall out because we had no water, somebody just come get us, <laughs> help us out. We certainly appreciate it. I do not do this work of, alone, certainly. It takes a lot of coordination to get everything just right to make sure that the kids are going to stay safe and they were going to learn. So this year we brought in some fantastic help. I have Monica Swope here who is the project manager for Youth Led Tech and we have Anthony Smith here who is the project coordinator of Youth Led Tech. They're the ones who chose the sites, got the food all together and got all the logistics so let's give them a big round of applause. When, when you start a summer program, especially when you're doing it in 10 different sites, so this is one of 10 sites. We're also running this program at the Juvenile Detention Center as a pilot as well. So when you're running a program with all these moving parts, you think you have enough people, you still never have enough people. So of course I've had to pull some of my other Smart Chicago staff members to assist us in, step, in a couple of different areas. So if you are a Smart Chicago employee, stand up and wave to everybody, let them know, get some love. <laughs> and last but not least, we have our, but most importantly, we have our instructors. Certainly they are the core of what makes this program work. They are the ones that was with the youth every single day, helping them, teaching them, encouraging them, providing a little bit of discipline to them, because some of them need it, um, certainly. And so I want all of our instructors for the Austin community to stand up and get a big round of applause. program off. Um, we have partners um, and you parents, you, we consider you to be partners and, and guardians and other folks that support our youth so we'll get you some love a little bit later in the program. But we have partners that work with us to help make this as successful as it has been. One of our partners is Microsoft. Microsoft is the organization that supported us to provide the laptops to the kids and uh, this year which was really interesting we had folks from Microsoft come to the actual sites to teach the youth about the machines. Because, you know, we buy stuff, don't anybody read the instructions, right? So we wanted to make sure that the youth actually understood what they could do with the, the machine so that they would be able to use it at its highest capacity. So I want to bring up Adam Hackman from Microsoft with a few words. Thank you so much. And thank you, Smart Chicago, for not only um, pulling together a fabulous graduation ceremony, but also for pulling together this whole program and allowing us to be part of it. My name is Adam Heckman. I am Microsoft's Director of Technology and Civic Innovation for Chicago. So I think I, I pretty much have the coolest job in the company. What I get to do is I get to work with community organizers, civic leaders, government leaders, activists, all the people that are trying to think about how to solve some of the most intractable problems in the city and try to figure out how technology could apply to that. So today is August 5th, right? Anybody know what happened here in Chicago exactly 50 years ago today? Martin Luther King. Yes. What, what, what happened? <laughs> Outstanding. Outstanding. So what's your name? Oh, Janae Gregory's mother. Gotta read. Ms. Ms. <laughs> Ms. Gregory's mother said uh, said that Martin Luther King Jr., Dr. King, visited Chicago, and he didn't just visit. He marched in Marquette Park. He organized a march to protest the unjust housing segregation practices in the city. Became a very famous event. Very famous milestone in the Dr. King story. 
And at the time, in nearby Chicago Long, my grandpa was the rabbi at a synagogue that was called Congregation Lawn Manor. And he set the synagogue up with Dr. King's people as what was called back then a safe house. A safe house is a place where you go when things get really bad and you get protection. So it was a place that Dr. King could be swiftly ushered to and held in safety should the situation turn catastrophic. Now the situation did not turn catastrophic, though he did face some pretty terrifying violence. There was some stone throwing and, and counter protests that way outnumbered the number of people Dr. King brought. But he fortunately didn't need to retreat to the synagogue. <coughs> but tonight, I plan on honoring Dr. King's legacy by returning to that synagogue that housed the congregation that my grandfather led. Interestingly, this is a very different congregation than it was 50 years ago. Now, this is a synagogue that houses, it's the only synagogue in Chicago like this that houses an all-black congregation of Jews. African Americans, Africans, Latinos, other Jews of color will come tonight. We'll celebrate Dr. King's teachings. I'll celebrate the Jewish Sabbath, the Shabbat, with my brothers and sisters from this very special community. But this afternoon, today, I'm going to celebrate your accomplishments with you because you are Dr. King's legacy. Right. Now, you just came through a pretty intense training program, and you did a lot of work. Ideally, you got a lot out of it, but you, you have a responsibility that comes with this program. You have a responsibility to keep that legacy alive. How do you do that? Well, you do that by continuing your education. You do that by not only taking jobs in the technical community, but becoming the leaders of the technical community. Each one of you needs to turn around and teach and mentor at least 10 others who were like you when you first started the youth-led tech program. You need to be the leaders that start the new businesses, that drive the new innovation, that inspires this next generation that's gonna come after you. And you've just been through a very challenging and rewarding program through youth-led tech. You did amazing projects, you made, hopefully, rewarding relationships. You learned a tremendous amount in a short period of time. And you worked really, really hard. So if my grandfather were alive today, and if he were standing here, he would say to you, Mazel Tov v'yashar koach, which means congratulations and may you go from strength to strength. Congratulations, everybody. We're really proud of you. Thank you. We got any praying people in the house? I'm going to need y'all to... I'm gonna need y'all to pray that I don't fall up these stairs at all during this whole thing, because this is being filmed, so we try to gotta protect myself, so I need that. Cover me, y'all, cover me. Um, <laughs> we have a new partner this year in Youth Led Tech. Um, there was a uh, apps competition some time ago, and uh, the organization that was responsible for that said, hey, we want to contribute to this very cool thing that we heard that you do call Youth Led Tech, and they're here today to actually speak with you as well. We have Chris Cote from CRT Labs. Hello, uh, my name is Chris Cote, lead lab engineer for CRT Labs. Uh, we are a research and development lab at the National Association of Realtors. So on behalf of National Association of Realtors, CRT Labs, and myself, I want to say congratulations. Uh, this is a huge, huge uh, milestone for you guys. Um, you know, and as, as we look towards the future, uh, you know, one of the things I say is software is eating the world, right? So I think you guys are taking a great first step um, to be the leaders of that new generation. Um, and you're not, and, you, and you've, you've taken that step outside of school, which I think is also amazing. That's a, it's a huge initiative. Um, and as you, uh, you know, as we move forward, um, you're, you're now gone from consumers of this media to creators. And not just of videos, of music, of this different stuff, but the infrastructure that drives it. Um, you have the skills to 
to help build this, this infrastructure. And I have no doubt that many of you will be the leaders of your neighborhoods, cities, communities into the future. Um, and uh, yeah, so congratulations. <laughs> Let's get those laptops. Thank you, Chris and CRT Labs. We certainly appreciate your support. So I'm gonna share a little bit about my story. When I was a senior in high school, um, I was preparing for uh, college and trying to figure out what I was gonna do next in my life. Um, I wanted to, to be a physician. I wanted to travel across the United States. I wanted to speak many different languages. I had all of these kind of kooky dreams about what I wanted to do with my life because I was interested in those things. I went to my high school counselor and said, you know, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to do. And my high school counselor looked at me very seriously and said, you know, black girls don't do what you're trying to do. He told me that if I was interested in going to college, that I had a better chance of getting into a black college than getting into any other college because the acceptance policies were as such that they didn't really take a lot of black kids into you know, more prominent universities. Basically saying that a black university wasn't a prominent university. Um, he discouraged me totally. So all the things that I had been working on as a young person, trying to be a good person, trying to make good decisions and stay out of trouble and be involved in extracurricular activities and being a volunteer in my community because I love people, made me feel like that I didn't matter. And all the things that I had worked for, it didn't matter. And so I was really, really sad and down for a couple of weeks. And finally, my parents asked, what's wrong with you? And I said, you know, my counselor told me these things. And of course, you know, we got parents out there. You know when somebody say something to your baby, what happens next, right? So my parents went on and handled that. Let me just say that for the record. But they had to explain to this, this counselor that I wasn't raised that way. I was raised to believe that I can do and be anything, and I can do and be anything and go anywhere, and that there was no limitations on my life, no matter how obscure or small. If I had the desire in my heart and the fortitude to be able to push through and make it to the other side, that certainly, 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 whatever was waiting on the other end was mine to claim. And so as a result of that, I want to say to my kids, my youth, because all of y'all are my kids now, we all refer to y'all affectionately as such, there is no limitation on your life. There are people in this world that do not want you to succeed. They want you to be captured in a box and only participating in things that they believe you deserve. And I am here to tell you that you deserve everything you have. This program is just one small step towards you making some better decisions to move in more positive directions and to grow into the adults positively that we know is in you. Don't let anybody put you in a box. Don't any, let anybody steal your dream. It's your dream. They don't have a right to take it from you. You own it. You need to not only work towards your limit, but you need to move that one step beyond your limit. I said to the other uh, class, Beyonce didn't stop at one album. She ain't stopped oh, 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 and when she did, she has moved into other things. She does film, she got married, she has a family. It is your job and responsibility to continue to grow and recreate yourself positively. We are here to be your helpers, your soldiers, your shoulders to cry on. There are a lot of adults sitting in this room that could have been doing anything else this summer, but they chose to sit in these classrooms for six, seven, eight, sometimes 10 hours a day to ensure that you were able to learn, that you got not only technology skills, but workforce development skills and effective communication and better interpersonal skills and so that you don't have to be labeled and limited. 
You are great, you are awesome, you are amazing. I want y'all to own this. Children, I need y'all to say, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. I'm amazing. I'm amazing. And I have no limits. I have no limits. And that's my word for you today. Almost got a little chachi up in here. I had to, you know, had to stand it back. <laughs> so we're going to now move on to our um, uh, presentation of our laptops and our certificates. And so I'm going to bring up our first site. We need the instructors for the Austin Community Center. Wilkins, one of the instructors at Austin Community Center. Um, it's been an absolute pleasure working with the kids this summer. Um, they have definitely met and exceeded all of our expectations, so it's a pleasure. Thank you for sharing them with us. Yes. I'm Adriana Alvarez. Sorry, um, I'm one of the assistant instructors as well. Um, I don't know. It's kind of hard to say goodbye. Well, not goodbye, but th these so six <laughs> weeks went by really quick, and I'm gonna miss them a lot. And I, I really wish we could have made this a little longer because I'm like, man, I'm not done, you know, working with you. But they were amazing and I love each and every one of them dearly and it's been nothing but a pleasure um, meeting these young individuals. So I'm a little sad. All right, all right. And good afternoon, my name is Jonathan Wallace. I served as the lead instructor uh, at the Austin site. Uh, first off, I want to thank you guys for placing your kids in our care, uh, for giving us the opportunity to kind of pour into them a little bit. Uh, there's so much that I can say uh, to them and uh, uh, say about them, but I won't because of time and things of that nature. I already waxed poetic uh, towards them for the last six weeks. Um, so with that being said, I'll, I'll say this one thing to them and, and be done with it. Don't make me proud. Don't even make your parents proud. Keep making yourself proud. So with that being said, first and foremost, Take our time. We want to bring up Mr. Demaja Hill. <laughs> Mrs. Michaela King. <laughs> Mr. Lamar Hollingsworth. <laughs> Mr. Greg Gordon. <laughs> that's all right. That's right. That's right. That, that's right. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Mr. Malik Francis. Hey. I know, right? Smile. Smile, okay? Why you love us? Pretend. Mrs. Tanae Binion. Thank <laughs> you. 
Khalil Johnson. All right. And last but not least, Mr. Tori Henderson Jr. Come on out. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I always like to report good news. Uh, we received a call today from Black Enterprise Magazine. Y'all familiar with Black Enterprise Magazine? And so they are interested in doing an expose on our program. Uh, and they're going to do interviews on Monday. And Lavandra Hughes, which is a student from Austin, <laughs> who, who wasn't, wasn't able to be here today because she's traveling with her family, but her website was chosen as one that they would like to highlight. So she's going to be interviewed and featured in Black Enterprise Magazine. Uh, next, up next is New Kingdom Church. May I have the instructions for New Kingdom Church? <laughs> All right, hi, I'm Javier. I'm one of the assistant instructors at New Kingdom Church. So uh, I just want to say that these past few weeks, uh, I learned a lot from these kids, and it's going to be really sad to see them go. But I've just been really impressed with their willingness to try new things, and things that they might not have known how to do at all. One of our students, Alexis, like had never really done as much coding before, and she she surpassed me. She's passed me in a free coding camp that we did. Um, so I've just been impressed with all the students and their willingness to try new things, and it's going to be sad to see them go, but... Hi, my name is Maisha Williamson. I was the lead instructor at um, New Kingdom Church, and um, the reason why I really like this program, I am an engineer by trade, and a lot of people always ask you, oh, it's nice to see a sister who's an engineer, or like, what were your parents? Were they engineers? Like, and I realized that they were asking me that because being a black female engineer is not normal. So I wanted to show other young kids that there are you know, black people in technology, there are women in technology, and hopefully you know, create a path that they can follow. So I'm uh, really impressed by these young people. Um, they are very awesome. I thank them for their willingness. They have a lot of energy. <laughs> so it really inspired me to keep up the energy. And I just hope that you all, even if you don't go into a technology field, that you really pursue your dreams. All of you all mentioned you want to go to college. And I said I'm following up with you guys and connecting with the mentors. And I just want you to really pursue and be diligent about going to college as you were as having fun this summer, so. <laughs> okay. So, first we have Alexis Williams. Martinez. He's our future computer scientist over here. Yes. <laughs> Sarah Jones. We have our future counselor. Future counselor. <laughs> We have Jalisa 
our future um, star here. <laughs> we have Jasmine Ward. Future actress. <laughs> We have Kiani White. Yeah. Future sports star. <laughs> we have Nia Williams. Yeah. Our future civil rights lawyer. Yeah. William Thomas. Our future programmer and sports star. <laughs> Zion Wilson. That was awesome. So Black Enterprise um, Magazine also chose Alexis Williams as a website that they were interested in. And just, I believe she was the first one across the stage, so we're excited about that. Last but certainly not least, um, the host site here, uh, we have the instructors from Sankofa. <laughs> How y'all doing today? Ooh, we got a mic. Go ahead, introduce yourself. My name is Jay. This is Tim, and this is Tay. Um, first, I guess, I just want to say I appreciate being having the opportunity to be a part of this program. It was an awesome experience. I had an awesome team, and our kids were extraordinary. It's almost sad that it's over. I felt like we just got started. But uh, with that being said, I'm gonna pass the mic to Tim. <laughs> uh, I'm a man of many disciplines, uh, designer, engineer by heart. Uh, it was really nice to connect with the interdisciplinary uh, amount of kids that we have here today. I, I look on to them and I see really great things out of all of them. I'm really proud of proud of all of them. Getting a little choked up there. <laughs> Go ahead. Hi, my name's Tay and I was the lead instructor. I want to say to all of you, I enjoy teaching you all, especially those who shock me with their personalities, Will. I just want to let you guys know I'll never forget you and make sure you choose an HBCU. <laughs> All right, so first we have Justin Wallace. <laughs> yeah, Caitlin Johnson. I mean, Kiana Johnson. I'm sorry. For Darius Clayton. Yeah. Aaliyah Ward. Thank you. Thank you. Will Lampley. Matthew Williams. Congratulations. Caitlin Williams. And last but 
but not least, Emmanuel Crawford. Jay, um, normally he like, what's up, boss lady? Why you doing? And he ain't greet me like that. I'm like, what's wrong? He looks so sad in his face, and he, I saw like a little baby tear. He was like, I'm gonna miss my kids. <laughs> He's normally so hard, but this experience has certainly provided a little more softness in his heart for children. So we appreciate his his his. Uh, his, his teaching opportunities as well as all the instructors that were, were here today. Um, we want to take this opportunity to thank all of our facilities. It takes a little bit of work and a lot of bit of prayer to ensure that everything goes well when we're operating programs and places and spaces that don't belong to us. So we want to make sure that we honor all of our spaces. The Austin Community Center, New Kingdom Church and is here at Sinkofa. Let's give them a big round of applause for hosting us. But not least, we want to thank you, the parents, the guardians, the support folks, grandmamas, aunties, and, and all. Give them a big round of applause, kids. We know parenting is hard in 2016. There's a lot of distractions going on in our communities and our neighborhoods, and we're so thankful that you entrusted us enough to love on your kids for these six weeks and hope that we've imparted something in them that they will take with them moving forward. Again, this is just the, the first step. We have lots of other resources in the community to connect kids that are interested in moving into other technical opportunities or are interested in just other areas of arts or science or whatever. We want to make sure that these kids stay involved, connected, where you have our eyes on them. We want to make sure that they're successful. This concludes our program. We have some yummy cupcakes and some beverages for you to partake in. For parents that attended the demo day on Wednesday and are here today for graduation, Anthony Smith, where are you? See that handsome gentleman over to the left for the little bit of incentive that we just want to say thank you for being our partners in participation this year. You fled set. <laughs>